Coming up on BCN Today, Environment Canada issues snowfall and winter storm warnings for southwestern Alberta. Plus, strong reaction from both Lethbridge school boards with the announcement that the city wants to phase itself out of a school bus service. And the death toll rises in the 6.4 magnitude Albania earthquake. Your Canada. Your Southern Alberta. Your stories. From our studios in the heart of Lethbridge, it's BCN Today with Jeanette Roche. Hello and thank you for joining us. Well, there's no doubt about it, winter is here. Environment Canada has issued snowfall and winter storm warnings for southwestern Alberta with some regions in higher elevations bracing for as much as 50 centimeters of snow. You are advised to adjust any highway travel. Also, we've received notice that due to winter storm conditions, the influenza clinic scheduled for today in Milk River from 2 to 6 p.m. at Heritage Hall has been canceled. Meanwhile, it's not looking great south of the border either. Some Americans may not be able to make it make the trip to be with their families for Thanksgiving tomorrow. A storm packing uh, heavy snow and high winds is sweeping north from Colorado, Wyoming and Nebraska is and it's pushing eastward into South Dakota, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota and Wisconsin. One death is already blamed on the storm. The Alberta Serious Incident Response Team is investigating the circumstances surrounding a 12-year-old girl being injured by Lethbridge police during an arrest on November 16th. According to a press release, officers were arresting the girl's mother for outstanding warrants and a physical struggle ensued while they were attempting to take her into custody. Her 12-year-old daughter became involved and received minor injuries which were treated in the hospital. On November 19th, legal counsel representing the 12-year-old reported to police that she had been injured. Police Chief Scott Woods is quoted as saying, I have complete confidence in the training and professionalism of our officers. Transparency is critical in maintaining public trust, and we welcome the independent investi investigation by ACERT." End quote. Lethbridge City Council had its first discussion this week on phase one of the three-year fiscal and operational review. The review was done by KPMG, offering several options on how to curb city spending. First report was made public last Monday, and uh, yesterday what uh, City Council did was we approved those 11 motions to authorize the city manager to move forward with the recommendations on the report. We got ahead of ahead of the provincial government. So if you look at what the provincial government had to do, um, they got in, they were in a deficit situation, so they put in cuts. We actually are, are not in that deficit situation, so we're doing what I would call a program review. So we're looking at things proactively to see how we can do things different. What this actually did was set us up very well for about the million and a half dollars we're going to be short on provincial revenue this year. This has shown City Council where some of those savings could potentially come in and what the service impacts are. If you compare that to uh, saying across the board we're going to cut 5%, um, 5% would be, you know, to every single service, whereas now City Council and the community can look at, we're, we're putting all that information on the table. That's why this particular report is online uh, for folks to read so they can see exactly what we're doing. So this actually puts us in a very good spot to respond to those provincial cuts. With the motions now passed, Strain is tasked with putting together a report with his findings to present to Council in June. Among them is exploring other operational and ownership options for NMAC Center. Also on the city's agenda is exploring ways of having schools operate their own school buses rather than the city. City Council voted uh, to not renew the school bus operations contract with the Lethbridge School Division and the Holy Spirit Roman Catholic School Division. This means that there's a potential that parents would be charged user fees to have their children ride the bus and it would be costly. From our perspective in the agreement, the city of Lethbridge doesn't assume any um, costs. If you take a look at the numbers we put out yesterday in the press release, um, our, our Payments to the city cover operations as well as administration and overhead and all of those kinds of things. I would hope that uh, the city would take a step back, uh, understand that it's a cost recovery. We've always come to the table saying if there are additional costs that we, we, we are unaware of, um, come to the table and let us talk. Uh, they did mention yesterday about some concerns with liability. We are more than willing to, 
to look at, at how we might be able to facilitate that and support them. Um, and ultimately, if that's the decision the city is going to make, um, I, I think parents in, in Lethbridge that are putting kids on buses right now um, should be outraged. And I think that's probably where, we, where we're going to have to go next because uh, uh, if, they, if they go forward with this decision as is, um, uh, our parents and our students are going to be impacted tremendously. When you look at bus fees being anywhere between three and $500 per child, per year, you know, start adding that up if you have a family of four. For this school year, the school divisions anticipate paying around $2.8 million for yellow school bus services and administration. There is also close to $67,000 spent on charters, such as field trips and almost $174,000 on access a ride. The strike at Canada's largest rail network may be over, but industry leaders say it will take time before supply chains get back on track. CN Rail and the union representing their workers reached a tentative agreement yesterday at a week after failed negotiations sent more than 3,000 employees to picket lines across the country. Normal operations are to resume this morning. The work stoppage was a major concern for grain elevator operators and farmers who were worried about lost sales and contract penalties. William Pallister is one of the directors with the Western Canadian Wheat Growers Association. Pallister says the end of the strike couldn't have come at a better time. Oh, it was vitally important that the Teamsters Union and the CN Rail Management came to a tentative agreement. It just shows how vital transportation is on the Western Canadian prairies. We have no other options to ship our grain, whether it's by truck or any other option. If it ends up at the railway, it has ends up at the elevator, it has to go by railway to the ports. As you may have heard, it came this rail strike came on the heels of the toughest harvest on record. Snow, rain, we couldn't get the crop off. Luckily on our farm, we ended up getting the crop off. But now with the CN rail strike, we, had a, we have a tough time delivering it to the elevator because the elevators are full and the whole lines are backlogged. The whole rail strike just shows how vital transportation is to Western Canadian agriculture. And something that's really hurting us now isn't just the rail strike, but it's the carbon tax on top of the transportation costs. When the carbon tax is added, that comes directly out of our bottom line, and it's not being talked about very much. But the carbon tax has the potential to price producers in Western Canada out of business. Meanwhile, Keith Curry, president of the Ontario Federation of Agriculture, says the commodities that CN chooses to prioritize will determine how quickly farmers get back on their feet. Alberta Premier Jason Kenney met with our country's new federal deputy prime minister, Christia Freeland, at the legislature earlier this week. Uh, Kenney says he hopes to find common ground between our province and Ottawa. When I first spoke to Prime Minister Trudeau uh, the day after our election in April, I indicated our desire to find common ground, uh, to be partners in prosperity. Um, and as the Prime Minister noted on election night, uh, he wants to be there for Alberta and Saskatchewan, recognizing there are some real tensions in the Federation, some deep challenges in our economy, and Albertans are looking for a fair deal, and I, I certainly hope we can get down to some uh, positive conversations about how to do that. Very much like to stay here. Uh, I am here uh, to look for common ground. Uh, the Premier is right that there are challenges in the relationship. Certainly our government heard from Alberta a strong message in the election. And that means we have to listen really hard. There's a lot of misinformation on social media right now in regards to the supervised consumption site at Arches. That is according to the Director of Operations at Arches, Jill Manning. Manning says to combat the fake news, they are offering information sessions to dispel some of the misconceptions of the SCS, which opened in February 2018. We recognize that there is a perception amongst some members of the community that as an agency, we've maybe been lacking in areas of accountability and transparency, and we really want to address that. Uh, it's tricky because in this day and age, the kind of primary means of a lot of communication is through social media, and unfortunately, it's 
we just don't have the resources to be able to address that on every single page and every single comment. I think that there is a kind of popular sentiment in community that we as an agency aren't providing enough services or supports that are recovery oriented or treatment based um, when in fact we do have programs that offer those services and so to provide some education around some of the other 15 programs that we operate additional to supervised consumption needle distribution. A community information session will be held this Thursday from 6.30 till 8.30 p.m. at the Westminster Hall. More sessions are planned for December 3rd and 5th at the same time at the Sandman Hotel Harvest Room. For more information, you can call Arches at 403-942-5543. The 30th annual Buchanan Libraries Food for Fines campaign is on. It encourages people to donate a non-perishable food item, gift card, or cash for the Lethbridge College Students Association Food Bank in exchange for having outstanding overdue library fines forgiven. Food for Fines started yesterday, November 25th, and it ends on December 18th. And this is the 30th campaign that we're doing here at Lethbridge College. And what it's all about is inviting the college community and our partners outside the community and anyone in the community really that wants to, to bring a donation of non-perishable food to our library, which we will then donate to the Students Association here on campus that runs our food bank. If you happen to be one of our patrons, we'll look up your account. And if you have any overdue fines owing, we will forgive your fines for you. All donations will go to the LCSA Food Bank, which is experiencing high demand. The former vice president of the Medicine Hat chapter of Youth with a Mission is being sued by the Christian Missionary Organization. The society filed a lawsuit in Alberta Court of Queen's Bench against Antonio Baldo Vinos and his wife, Christelle. The statement of claim says nearly $1.2 million went missing from accounts between 2012 and 2014. The group helps people get involved in outreach missions around the world. The couple has yet to file a statement of defense and none of the allegations have been proven in court. Bill Peters' status in the Calgary Flames coach, as of Calgary's Flames coach, is in question as the NHL investigates allegations that he directed racist slurs at the uh, Nigerian-born player in the minor leagues 10 years ago. General Manager Brad Treeliving Tree says Peters, rem Peters uh, remains with the Flames, but he will not be behind the bench tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. Akim Eliu uh, alleges that Peters, quote, dropped the N-bomb several times towards him in the dressing room in his rookie year because he didn't like his choice of music. It happened 10 years ago while the two were with the Chicago Blackhawks minor league affiliate in uh, Rockford, Illinois. The NHL has called the alleged behavior repugnant and unacceptable, but he's, um, they're holding off on commenting pending further investigation. The death toll from a magnitude 6.4 earthquake in Albania has reached 26. Yesterday morning's quake injured about 650 people. Several apartment buildings in the city of Duras uh, collapsed and rescuers are still digging through rubble in search of survivors. Crazy winter weather out there. Environment Canada has issued snowfall and winter storm warnings for southwestern Alberta. Complete weather details are coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Here's a look at our weather highlights. Uh, as we mentioned before, snowfall and winter storm warnings are in effect for southwestern Alberta, uh, including Lethbridge. We're expecting up to 50 centimeters. Minus 7 is the high today. Minus 10 is the high for tomorrow. Snowfall expected into tomorrow as well. And then we got a little bit of a reprieve from it up in the five-day forecast there. Uh, no snow is expected so far on Friday. Mix of sun and cloud though with a high of minus 13 degrees. Saturday and Sunday looks like lots of sunshine is coming our way with high of uh, minus 10 Saturday and rising to minus 2 on Sunday. We're going to be rising to plus temperatures next week though for Monday and Tuesday with highs of 7 and 9 degrees and lots of sunshine back in the forecast. The Almanac says the average highs and lows for this time of year should be about 2 degrees and a low of minus 10 degrees. The highest temperature on this day was in 1949. It was 12 degrees. 
The lowest was minus 34, and that was back in 1985. Look at the sunrise this morning. It was at 8.01 a.m. and the sun set will be setting this evening at 4.37 p.m. giving us only about eight and a half hours of sunlight these days. Looking to the west coast, Victoria is expecting an eight degree high with mix of sun and cloud. Scattered clouds as well expected in Vancouver with a high of six. Edmonton will be seeing a high of minus eight and Calgary a high of minus 10. Snowfall is expected in both of those cities as well. Now looking into uh, Saskatchewan, Saskatoon will also be seeing some flurries today with a high of minus six. Lots of cloud coverage today though in Regina with a high of minus four and snow also expected in Winnipeg for a high of minus uh, two degrees. Toronto, Ottawa and Montreal, we're gonna be seeing a rainfall all through this region today with a high of 10 degrees in Montreal. Uh, two degrees is expected in Ottawa and five degrees expected in Montreal. Lots of, uh, lots of rainfall though. And then look at what's happening in Atlantic Canada. We're, they're going to sunshine over there. So we're going from snow to rain to sun. Fredericton's expecting high of six degrees, Halifax high of nine degrees, Charlottetown a high of five degrees with scattered clouds and lots of cloud expected in St. John's, Newfoundland today. That's your forecast. Here's a look at what's happening in your community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. The Downtown Lethbridge BRZ is looking for volunteers to help with the Downtown Holiday Market, taking place Saturday, November 23rd. Volunteers will be assisting with setup and takedown, handing out popcorn and hot chocolate, and the best job of all, helping Santa Claus. For more information, email Tasha at Tasha at downtownlethbridge.com. The 15th Annual Lethbridge Mayor's Prayer Breakfast is taking place Saturday, November 30th at 9 a.m. at the Sandman Signature Lethbridge Lodge. Put on by the Lethbridge Evangelical Ministerial Association, come join in the gathering to honor and pray for those who have dedicated their lives to the service of our community. Tickets are $20 and can be purchased by calling 403-308-1696 or email mpblethbridge at gmail.com. Make Christmas special for a child in need. Center Village Mall Toy Mountain is accepting donations of new unwrapped toys until December 20th during mall hours. All toys will be distributed through the joint efforts of the Christmas Hope Campaign. For details, visit christmashope.ca. Plus, come for the arrival of the big guy himself, Santa Claus, at Center Village Mall on Saturday, December 7th at 11 a.m. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar. So do you find it annoying when public toilets automatically flush when you're not done your business? You're not alone. Next time you're in a public restroom and the toilet is equipped with an auto flush, keep in mind today's daily life hack. Place a piece of toilet paper on the auto flush sensor and take as much time as you need. And there you go, that's your daily life hack. Downtown Winnipeg turned into a sea of blue and gold Tuesday as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers drove through the streets to celebrate their Grey Cup win. About 10,000 fans screamed as the parade along with the, uh, the silver trophy made its way through the city, marking the end of a 29 year drought. The Bombers won their 11th Canadian Football League Championship with a 33 to 12 victory over the Hamilton Tiger Cats on Sunday in Calgary. I find the players are always very friendly, same with the staff and they're always really sweet to her. She actually made a really good friend. Uh, he's not on the team anymore, but he still talks to her now, Maurice Leggett, so number 31, <laughs> he laughed from last year, so uh, it's a really nice community. It makes us feel like winners. Uh, I was only two months when they won, so obviously I was too young to remember it, but it was, it, it's definitely a great experience now, and I'm very happy that she gets to experience it. Whenever we're at the stadium, when I scream so loud, I help them cheer. I help them. I'm meeting lots of Bomber fans out here, season ticket holders. Some people are first time attendees to the Great Cup Parade like I am. I've never seen a Great Cup Parade live before. So I, I just like to get in the, in the spirit of the, of the event. An intruder did not count on an 82-year-old woman living alone to be an award-winning bodybuilder with nerves of steel. The intruder was in for a big surprise when he met up with Willie Murphy. He was outside saying, please call an ambulance because I'm sick, I'm sick, 
I hear a loud noise, and I'm saying to myself, what the heck is that? The young man is in my home. Broke the door. I'm alone, and I'm old, but guess what? I'm tough. I took that table, and I went to working on him, and guess what? The table broke. And when he's down, I'm jumping on him. Ah, ah, ah. He's laying down already because I had really did a number on that man. That's one lady you don't want to mess with. Well, if you're looking to get into the Christmas spirit by giving this season but have no extra cash on you, no problem. Salvation Army now takes mobile donations. Cashless shoppers have a new option to give to the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign this year using their smartphones. The current economics require the fact that we are able to let people know that they can help even if they don't have hard currency on them. They can make a donation electronically. It was fast. It was very easy. I just took a picture and then it popped up in Safari and I was able to do it right away. Jesus. I don't carry any cash in the city. I don't think it's uh, a good idea for myself with two kids. And so to be able to give online, was uh, it made it possible. So this can kind of happen magically. People can make the donation without actual money going into the kettle. Oh, I thought it's fantastic. I think it's a real easy way to pay and it doesn't give people a really a way to say no that they don't have any cash. Terrorism is alive and well in both Iraq and Afghanistan as tragically more people were killed in separate attacks. Our foreign affairs expert Lisa Daftari has details coming up after the break. Stick around.